Oh wow, 13 beautiful souls, 14. Welcome to Matt Bayeski Instagram Live. Welcome to the Pure Energy Healing Academy where we've had thousands of clients, thousands of practitioners walk through these doors and become amazing self-healers and healers to the world. Today we're going to talk about health and we're going to talk about cancer. So cancer is normally um, associated with um, a painful death. Cancer is also associated with um, two forms of um, cure uh, by the modern day medical practices. Anything else is by law illegal. So nobody in this world, on this planet, is allowed to mention any kind of alternative. Um, and yet so many people move into the light through the only legal way. And quite often they move in a way of great pain and suffering. But that's okay because it's legal. So that's legal pain and suffering. So my understanding of cancer is a very personal one. I watched a beautiful woman who just happened to be my mother move into the light when I was 12 years old and she had stomach cancer and it's not the most happy story to tell. Of course it's not. Um, she went through various let's say highs and lows of her chosen path when she came here and one was she went to the doctors and quite often not wrongly diagnosed as many people were in them days even till this day of course so she came home jumping with excitement telling everybody she was pregnant because that's what the doctor believed And the reason why is because her stomach was getting bigger. Um, it soon became evident that that wasn't the case. And she came home again from the doctors and this time the doctor told her it was a cyst. So she was a little bit sad. Then they opened her up and I don't know if any of you guys know but once air gets inside, once they cut laser burn the cancer obviously spreads because the word cancer is just a fictitious word for a bag of toxic poison inside the body that the beautiful and healthy body creates so that it doesn't go around the body so that bag which grows and grows is basically toxic so the body is very clever it gathers up all them toxins and put them into a bag and seals it. And of course, modern day science comes and cuts it and opens it up and it spreads everywhere. And I'm sorry, Mrs. Bayerski, but we've opened you up and there's nothing we can do because the cancer's everywhere. At 12 years old, it's very difficult to understand death because nobody teaches us death because nobody wants to talk about death and therefore it's a painful situation and we don't tend to look at it and we we tend to ignore it we tend to ignore it we tend to pretend it's not there it's so much easier eh we don't talk about what cancer is it's never mentioned we don't talk about how to prevent cancer because that's not business 
minded. Of course it's not, because cancer is probably one of the biggest businesses in the world. Why take away multi-trillion business when it's making so much money for parasites? And plus it's a, an, a, an, a very, very practical uh, global satanic ritual. So that's why there's never a cure. They'll never find a cure, even though there's plenty of them. But let's not talk about that. Let's talk about something else today. Let's talk about cancer. Let's talk about why cancer comes into the body. And there are many factors of cancer coming into the body, it's not just one. And this is where it becomes complicated because humanity looks for a singular answer to everything right what if there's more what if this is a contribution of many different factors that create the moment where so-called tumors and and cancer and and the blood turning cancerous and so on well at 38, at 38 years old, I began opening my door when I started a new practice. And that practice is, and is till this day really, which I teach in this academy, is called healing. And a lot of people see healing or believe the word healing is something that means that we are going to fix instantly. When in actual fact, if you understand the word healing and you, you really analyze it, healing to me means looking after your body, managing your body, taking care of your body. That's healing. Not when you're sick, you run to somebody to fix you. That's not healing because nine times out of 10, it's too late. So, where do we start with this conversation? At 38 years old, when I was confident and I realized that the work which was happening that I was seeing in front of my eyes and my clients, I became a little bit more confident. And I remember I was on a radio show. I was on quite a few radio shows at that time. And uh, I announced that I'd like to open the doors, my doors, my healing studio, it's only small, to anybody who had cancer, free of charge. And I did that between two and three years. And somebody asked me why, why are you doing this? And I said, because it feels like I want to give back what I couldn't when my mum was of this world. I felt so helpless and it was a way to try and help people and in the and in those three years two to three years what did you actually do mark did you cure well some people believed i did through the work that we did together some people moved into the light some mums some dads some grandmas some children said I helped their family member at the time that they needed somebody the most. So that part of the healing process was at times preparing them for going back home. Sometimes they would come with tumors which would disappear or just slowly go down to nothing and skin cancers disappearing and so many other things that happened with a lot of my clients, which were kind of like miracles. And that was something I took note, I wrote down. But what interested me most of all, which nobody talks about in the mainstream, was why their cancer came and why is it some people never get cancer? Again, there is no singular thing that you can 
say this is the answer to because when we look at food, let food be thy medicine, let medicine be thy food. I have a dear friend called Paul Dyson and he's a postmaster. At the moment, he's not, he uh, sold his business and uh, he now works at Sainsbury's, bless him, at Huddersfield. Great guy. If you ever get a chance, go into Sainsbury's in Huddersfield and um, go and exchange some cash, uh, euros for pounds, and he's at the desk there. Say hello to him. Paul Dyson won't mind me saying this, but he goes against the grain of everything that I teach. He wakes up in the morning and he has a cup of tea with his sugars in, refined sugar, and he always has a Kit Kat. Now, if you're in another country and you don't know what a Kit Kat is, it's a chocolate chocolate bar made by, I believe, Nestle or some crappy company that poisons the world. Um, through the day, he likes his baked beans and toast, uh, sometimes eggs, and um, let's just say everything. Or he doesn't eat vegetables. Never. He's, he's in his late 60s now, and he's never been sick in his life. I think he's nearly 70. Never been sick in his life. There's um, a gentleman next door, two doors, called Parfit. This is the emotional side of things. Parfit, when I first came here, was 84 years old. I've lived here 21 years. Parfit is still alive. When I first came here, when I was married to Susie, Susie said, a horrible man just pushed me out of the way on the road. And I said, really? She said, yeah, he's horrible. He's an older man. And he just pushed me out of the way with his walking stick. And we got to know him as Parfit and is actually a genius and a lovely man, but has great issue with anger. And he holds on to a lot of anger. And he's probably one of the most angriest man and obnoxious uh, men that I've ever met in my life. Still love him. Great guy. Genius. He's, he's uh, well known all over the world for designing um, skyscrapers in New York, Hong Kong, all over the world. And many people who are architects um, see him, revered, revere him as a, one of the geniuses of our time. He actually designed this top of the building. Parfit, on an emotional side, has kind of zero tolerance for people. Um, holds on to so much anger that his shoulders are, are bent forward. And he's 93 or 94 years old and still living strong goes against the grain of everything that I believe. So why am I sharing this with you today? The reason why I'm sharing this today is because I believe there is a battle between light and dark. There is a battle between evil and good. And there's also a battle between the heart and mind. I believe over these years of working as a healer and working with thousands of people with cancer in this room, in a small room where I had a shop called Tickle Pink, I traveled the world to over 37 different countries, asked to heal people in hospitals, Denmark, Sweden, all over Belgium, where people were supposedly going to die with cancer. I've treated thousands of people with cancer. So I make this video today not of conversations of regurgitation of other people's work, people's thoughts and feelings, but of 100% experience. So have I ever come to a, an understanding how cancer starts. I do, and I have, 
but it's not cut in stone. It's not 100% the answer, but there is something in what I share with you today that I believe needs to be spoken about, needs to be acknowledged. And that is the emotion, the root cause, the beginning of any illness stems from emotion, trauma, stress, shock, grief, loneliness, sadness, some people call depression, frustration, huge one, and so on. So all of these words which we label are actually an energy and we call it negative energy. A negative energy is created by the tool that is called the mind. Once you begin the creation of a label, i.e. frustration, it has what I see as a grey matter. So the mind is pure, the mind is happy as a child until we experience abuse of one kind or another, another child hitting us or somebody rejecting us because rejection is also a very dangerous energy, very dark and very destroying. So, and so it begins. So, with frustration, it could be as simple as things aren't going as you'd hoped. You're in a situation that revolves and never changes. And every day you're frustrated because there is no light at the end of the tunnel. Why is things the way it is and you can't see a way out. That is an energy that eats away at a certain part of the body. So where have I seen frustration eat? Within men, frustration eats away at the testicles normally. And that is the truth. I'll give you a for instance, one of my clients who came to me a long time ago, and it was at the over 50s show in the Congreso, the Palacio de Congreso in Marbella. I had a stand and I was doing healing sessions and this beautiful man came up to me, tall man, smiled um, and did this and I smiled back and I, I did this and he said namaste and I said namaste and he lied down and I started my healing work and what is healing work first of all it's something that you start to feel without touching the body and you're looking for anomaly different energy different feelings on the body and sometimes you can be pulled to that place without scanning it I was pulled to this man's private parts. So my hand was about this far above his private parts and my hand then started going to great pain. I actually felt the same pain in my groin. It was almost unbearable. After the healing session, the man opened his eyes and was very thankful and looked at me and he said, this shouldn't have happened. And I looked confused. And so he began his conversation. Mark, I've been on this spiritual path practically all my life. I own and run a healing center in India. I also own a healing center in Spain. I have met some of the most amazing yogis Paramananda, Yogi Nanda, and so many others. 
I have been a vegetarian all my life. I pray, I meditate daily. This shouldn't have happened to me. I embraced those words. I gave him a hug and he left. As the months went by, I started doing more and more healing sessions and it's almost like synchronicity. Spirit brings certain people for me to pay attention to. And I remember the following week a man came to see me and he was deeply distressed. He was in the energy of frustration. It became evident while I was reading his energy and his future as well as his present and past that he was in conflict, turmoil and deep, deep frustration over two women. He was married but he was also in love with another woman. He loved them both but could not choose and he'd lived like this for many years. What happened to this man? He had te testicular cancer within a few weeks of me seeing him. About a month went by and another man came and he was a an airline pilot who was going through some interesting challenges in his life. His wife had found out that he was also married in another country. So he had two wives and two sets of children. No surprise there. Testicular cancer came to him as well. It isn't always when we get testicular cancer that we have two partners, but what was evident was the frustration. The frustration in life. You see, the first man who came to see me, who ate healthy, looked after himself, lived in kibbutz, also lived with frustration. Frustration of never being who he believed he should have been, which was a guru. So he was always wanting to be something more than what he was. And I saw that and felt it within him. So thus, my conclusion was that anybody who lives in lack of something, that they feel that they're always in the energy of never being able to quite come to what they believe they should or who they should have been even though they should have been but they didn't and they lived in that energy that energy when created in the mind constantly through the day through the week through the month through the years has to go somewhere and the way I try and explain this is it flows like a dark, dirty poison that runs down and finds a place where it sits comfortably. And once it sits there, it starts to eat away at the physical. I came to understand this as one out of a hundred or, or more different causes of illness and why they started. So I make this video today out of love and out of compassion and hoping that people can embrace this now to stop the possible end result which is cancer because of your trauma your lack of 
your frustration, your fears, your angers, your disappointments, all of those energies that we create as well as we can create positivity, happiness, joy, which heals the body. We're never taught this at school. We never will be taught because if we're taught this vital piece of information, sickness would disappear within a generation. So, I guess the end of this conversation would be this. Now that you know what you know, you have a choice. You either honour your body or you continue killing it. How do you do that? How do you manage your body? How do you keep illness at bay? It doesn't take a rocket science to figure out that eating healthy, doing good things for yourself, doing good deeds, being kind, being kind to yourself, self-healing, working on yourself, clearing the trauma, clearing the knee-jerk reactions, clearing the anger, the frustration of all of those root causes that trigger you to feel this way. Working on one thing at a time to fixing and healing that issue is a wonderful thing to do. And having a a reaction that is positive in the body. So every time you get angry, you bring a positive reaction out saying, ha, there it is. Recognizing it, having an alarm bell as soon as you start getting sad, depressed, frustrated. As soon as you recognize that feeling, ask yourself where and why it came into you. And that's a good start, it's a beginning. So all of us need to embrace this understanding now more than ever because we're going to see more and more cancer because of the pain and suffering that is spilled upon us, spewed upon us daily through mainstream media. You see, if you can keep a nation sick, if you can keep a nation in fear, if you can keep a nation in frustration, then you can kill a nation. So now that you know this, what are you going to do to counteract? Throw the TV away? Switch off the negative radio? Turn off your black screen whenever you see something that makes you feel sick or makes you angry or frustrated? Look in the mirror and work on yourself, eat healthy, practice daily rituals of love. Every time you eat, eat consciously and say thank you. Every time you take a sip of water, put good energy into it with love. And like I said, have a measuring stick there to see how you're doing each day, grow, my recommendation right now is drinking a parasite cleanse. I am on day 122 or 123 right now of my parasite cleanse, which is mugwort and sage. And I drink that three times a day. I have never been healthier in my life. I have never felt more sharp, aware, free of anger, free of frustration. Why? Well, if you are a big drinker of refined sugars, if you're a big eater of refined sugars, chocolates and junk, if you eat a lot of fish and meat, then it's a no brainer. You're going to get parasites in your brain and your stomach. It's the way it is. By drinking parasite cleanse, you'll find that many of them will die and you will start to be yourself 
because parasites take over your mind and your stomach. And they certainly make you want more of what they need to eat. And thus we call it an addiction when in actual fact, it's simply the parasites telling you that they need to eat. And they are amazing at getting to certain parts of the brain and cutting off many of the electric connectors to our balanced thoughts and feelings. They know exactly where to go and how to manipulate us. Eating fruit and vegetables daily, which are free from GMO, is probably the most powerful thing you can do for your physical body. But I think ultimately, you can eat as healthy as you want or unhealthy as you want. You can exercise a thousand times a day or not. But if you hold fear, negative thoughts inside you, I believe the chances of disease spirals from one to a thousand percent. This is food for thought. This is my contribution to you over two decades of understanding health, energy, emotion, spirituality, I guess, but more so experience of thousands of clients. I hope it saves you well. Good luck and shine bright. Work on yourself. Remember, you are amazing and you can make the change in your life. So make today the first day of the rest of your life and join me. Have a great day. Love you all. I hope you enjoyed this chat.